Twin brothers Colin and Taylor Fitzpatrick have both had historic seasons, shattering school records left and right. Colin's NIU team has an opportunity to go undefeated and make the college football playoffs, and while Taylor's Kent State team is out of the playoff picture, they'll have a chance to play spoiler to the Huskies in a highly anticipated MAC championship game. After Colin's team won the first matchup in a blowout, Taylor will be out for revenge, and we'll see if Colin can lock down his Heisman Trophy and playoff spot, or if Taylor will finally come out on top. Okay, so here we go, boys. NIU is potentially hosting the biggest championship game in MAC history, and Colin is off to the races on the first play, trucking down the sideline for a 28-yard game. Last time Colin and Taylor played each other, Colin absolutely dominated the matchup. Kent State's defense couldn't do anything, and I expect him to get his today. Taylor's gonna have to score on nearly every drive to give his team a chance, because look at this, man. This dude Colin is just untackleable. One spin move, and he is gone for a 43-yard gain against this paper mache Kent State defense. All eyes are on Colin, who's a potential Heisman winner out of the mag. But remember, Taylor is the leading passer in college football right now. Outside of their loss to NIU, Kent State's only losses have been to, I think, LSU and Clemson. Last time, this NIU defense did give Taylor a little bit of trouble, but he's finding easy reads early on. As long as he has those quick reads open, he'll be fine. Where he gets in trouble is where he starts forcing the ball, and he'll just have to throw it out of bounds on first down. Where Colin has a pretty solid supporting cast around him, Taylor has to work very, very hard for this Kent State offense to move the ball. This is a big third and three in what is potentially two down territory. Territory, and Taylor was trying to find A, just makes an absolutely terrible throw that should have been picked. And that'll give Taylor another chance here. But he doesn't look like he has anything open. He'll get out of the pocket and float it up for Harris, who is able to make the toe tapping catch. So the drive is going to stay alive for Kent State. Taylor looks a little bit shook up, just taking the easy read to Gardner. That's the other thing, man. Taylor pretty consistently gets hit very hard. His offensive line does not do a great job of protecting him. When you're throwing the ball as many times as he does in a game, you're bound to take some hits, anyways. And I don't know why Gardner came so far back to the ball there. Taylor's just got to finish this drive off. He's been taking a lot of easy reads to the flats, but Gardner does not look like he knows where he's going. I wouldn't be surprised if this was two down territory again, and this time it doesn't look like Taylor has anybody. He is going to take a sack, and the Northern Illinois defense gets an early stop. Golden Flash is at least able to get a field goal, but they'll need more than that today. Colin gets the ball back after a dominant first drive, and he has fresh legs after Taylor took a lot of time to move his team down the field. Not a luxury that he's really used to having, as he's averaging 22 yards per carry already in this one, almost broke another one loose. Really, it's a shame Taylor has this defense to back him up, because they seem to be one of the slowest in the country based on what I've seen today so far. It would be pretty huge if Taylor's defense could come up with a stop, and they do actually guard Colin out of the backfield. Hampton will have to throw it elsewhere, but it's a first down anyways for Chris Carter. That felt like a stop that Taylor's team needed for sure. But on second down, they are able to get another tackle for loss, and Colin's going to have to come out of the game after that one. So we'll see what Hampton can do on third and 11. He's going to throw back across his body, but yeah, that other running back is not quite the same as Colin. And the Huskies went ahead and missed the field goal in the sim. So Taylor's team potentially has a little bit of life here, but that was a risky screen pass. Taylor has really got to take advantage of his team getting a stop. He'll have a third down here and get out of the pocket. Maybe shouldn't have gone to the side where there were no receivers. As he'll put his head down, but that's not going to be enough to get anything. So Taylor wastes an opportunity with a three and out, and Colin's going to get the ball right back. Now he's got fresh legs, and nobody will stop him. He cruises around the outside for an easy 25-yard pickup. Taylor's going to get the ball after halftime though. So if he can get his boys a touchdown here, he'll be looking pretty good. And he's going to get out of the pocket, might have a man deep downfield, but somehow that cornerback had eyes in the back of his head to swat it away. So what could have been a huge gain turns into a near turnover for Taylor, but he's going to find that boy Florier who has tons of room for a 25 plus game. That's Florier's first catch on the day. Taylor has got to get him going. And he'll find Garcia out of the backfield as this offense is starting to get back into a rhythm. This is where we've had problems though. Taylor has got to be able to push this into the end zone for a touchdown. And he's doing a good job of spreading the ball around on this drive. We'll see what happens with the red zone offense here. Taylor is actually going to keep it on a read option and has some space plowing forward for 10 yards. And with plenty of time, he's going to get out of the pocket on first and goal. Tried to outrun a guy, but unfortunately cannot. Lots of wasted goal line plays for Taylor. He's going to try to hit Florier here though, and Florier will get down to the one. I thought he was over the plane for sure. All right, Taylor's got to find a way to get in. On the quarterback sneak, he'll hurdle over the line and get it. A huge moment for this Kent State offense. The golden flashes are going to get the ball out of halftime here with a chance to potentially take the lead. We'll see what Taylor can cook up here. He's going to throw it to McCray, but McCray was out of bounds. Bad awareness from the receiver. Now Taylor's going to be way behind the sticks. He'll have to make a big throw and has a guy up the seams, thankfully. A bust from NIU and Holmes able to get 23. So Taylor and Kent State are suddenly in a good position and no one checks Florier off the line. He'll have that out route wide open. But after some early mistakes, Taylor is
is starting to get into a rhythm and the run game's been good for some yards here and there. We'll see if this NIU defense tightens up here, but it looks like Taylor will have a shot over top. That's Florier who brick hands a beautiful ball from Taylor. Come on now, man. That is a potential game changer right there. And a big part of the reason Taylor and this Kent State team aren't elite, but Junker is going to get open and that'll make up for a lot of those yards we just lost. Okay, so Taylor has a chance to finish out this drive with a touchdown. He'll take the curl here, but McCray drops the wide open touchdown. Are you kidding me? The frustrations just keep on coming for Taylor. He's going to get out of the pocket here. Doesn't look like he has anyone open, but able to get the ball out so he doesn't get sacked. All right, third and 10. Let's see what Taylor's got. He's going to get out of the pocket again. Might have a lane here and will put his head down to make this fourth and one. We'll see what coach decides. Taylor's going to be running the read option on fourth and one, and he is going to keep it. He is dog tired, but has a wide open lane, and the Kent State Golden Flashes take the lead on the undefeated Huskies. So a very interesting turn of events, man. I honestly was not expecting Taylor to be able to compete in this one, and Colin has definitely done his part to move this offense down the field. It's important to note, there is definitely more pressure on Colin in this game. He's the Heisman frontrunner, and his team has a legitimate chance to be a national title contender, as this Kent State defense looks to have gotten a little bit of mojo, but Colin is wide open here, and he'll have a chance to get out of there, swerving around a blocker, and he will take this to the crib. Made that look a whole lot easier than Taylor's drive, for sure. Taylor is looking much more confident than he did at the start of this game, maybe a little bit too confident there, as Florier's been dropping a lot of passes today. The normally sure-handed receiver has got to get his act together on this one. And Taylor's looking for X over top. He actually has him deep, but cannot quite spot up and make the throw. Lucky it wasn't picked off. All right, Taylor's been pretty heroic so far, but he's going to have another third down. Thankfully, has the out route wide open. This time, thankfully, McCray doesn't drop it, and he breaks a tackle. McCray might be off to the races and is going to get caught, but it'll be a 40-yard gain at a very needed moment. This has turned out to be a pretty awesome game, and Taylor's just going to take the underneath there. Linebacker almost stepped up and played that. So here we go. This is the tough location for Taylor, but he's got Shakur over the middle. Not sure how that wasn't a touchdown, but we'll take it. This game heads to the fourth quarter, looking much tighter than expected. Taylor's just going to have to go with the QB sneak here, and he will get that thing in easily. The number two team is on the ropes here in the MAC championship game, and Taylor just set a rushing touchdown season record for Kent State. Pretty funny, because I still definitely don't think of Taylor as a runner, but he's been able to get it done. Colin, though, just has had huge holes all day. It is amazing that his team is not in the lead right now. This one might end up coming down to who has the ball last, and Colin is literally going to juke out the entire Kent State defense here. We've seen some crazy jukes for Colin man, but that one might have just been the best. I think that might stand up as one of the craziest jukes in NCAA history. This is why Colin is the Heisman front runner, man. We have never seen this before. Look at all the defenders that he makes miss with one step back. I mean, five defenders right in the spot and he gets around all of them. Whatever happens here the rest of this game, I think it's safe to say Colin's locked down the Heisman trophy and Taylor is still dealing, but Junker drops the ball. What is up with all these drops today? This is definitely one of the worst performances from these Kent State receivers and Taylor does not have anything open here. He's going to try to get out of the pocket again and actually is able to escape. He will somehow pick up a first down. Who's saying this man's not a runner? He might not be blazing fast, but he's faster than those defensive ends. And that is really all that matters. So get out of the pocket here and have McCray downfield for a big game. This dude just will not quit today. Taylor is clearly determined to finally come out on top against his brother. And has Gardner on the corner route here. It'll be a foot race and Gardner will get down inside the red zone. All right, so we'll see what Taylor can do. Looks like he's going to have the out route out here. He'll pull the trigger and McCray drops it. That's fine, man. Taylor's dealt with adversity before. He's going to get out of the pocket again. This man is dog tired. He's going to throw across his body. Had X, but got hit. The Kent State coach is going to take a timeout. Taylor's got to rest his legs a little bit. So here we go. Play of the season for Kent State. Taylor's got routes over the middle, but he's going to get out of the pocket again and goes down. It'll be fourth and 12. That was just not a good play call. All right, no choice but to go for it here. Let's see if Taylor can gut it out one more time. And it looks like he has the out route, but sails it over McCray. That is just painful. Let's be real, man. McCray probably would have dropped it anyways, but that one's going to be haunting Taylor for a long time if he loses this game, and it looks like that might be the case because Colin Fitzpatrick is unstoppable. The man has already won the Heisman Trophy, and it looks like he might win this game. That'll put him over 300 rush yards. Now Taylor's coach has made me kind of wishing he took the field goal, especially with Taylor so tired, but no time to dwell on the pass. Taylor has got to lead a drive here and almost takes the sack, barely gets the ball out. It might take a miracle for Kent State at this point, but Taylor has 
has provided a couple of those this season. This drive is going to have to be quicker than his other ones. And that'll require him hitting a big play over top at some point. He just fits it into A there, and that was a very risky throw. But at this point, he's got to make risky throws. And State is just going full four verts mode here. That was almost a crazy play from the DB, but a couple of nice throws from Taylor. And this one might not be over after all. The seam has been wide open on this drive as Eccles, who I don't even know who that is, is going crazy. Taylor's able to get his team down to the one yard line real quick and is getting out of the pocket. We'll have to just get the ball out. Looks like he'll try to get it in with a quick QB sneak and is able to. Okay, we'll see what happens here. And State's probably going to go for two and that is what they're going to do. Taylor is going to try to get it to the slant route and does. It is a three point game. All right, Kent State's going to go for the onside kick with a minute 49 left. This ball is going to bounce off a Northern Illinois player and holy crap, man, Kent State has the ball. I have never seen that happen in a sim before. That is unbelievable. Taylor cannot waste this opportunity. He's got to find Junker up the seam and Kent State is close to field goal range already. Wow, man. I thought this game was 100% over. Colin probably can't believe it. But Taylor gets stood up on the read option. He's going to get a chance at redemption after his overthrow earlier and he's just going to take the halfback wheel route, but wow, what a hit. Garcia gets it knocked loose. All right, big time third and 11. Got to find a way here and Taylor will lead McCray up field. That'll be close to the first down. It's going to be a fourth and one. I'll take a timeout. Kent State is not going to trust the kicker. They'll go for the fourth and one. And it doesn't look like Taylor has anything open right away, but he will find Garcia on the backside. An absolutely great read and great catch from Garcia. And Taylor's got 45 seconds. He'll go with the out route again, and Harris turns it up field, getting down to the five yard line. Oh my God. Taylor's got a chance to punch it in, handing it off to Garcia. And I'm surprised Northern Illinois is not taking timeouts here. Taylor's just got to be careful to not turn it over here. Need to at least make sure he gets some points, and he'll get out of the pocket fighting for the end zone and he's going to be down to the one. He's got to get to the line. All right, third and goal. This is pure guts for Taylor. He's going to throw to the slant route and McCray catches it. The cornerback was right on him and Kent State is going to take the lead with six seconds on the clock. So Northern Illinois is going to have six seconds. Colin is back for the kick return for the first time this season and he might actually have some room. There is no time left on the clock and Colin is in a foot race but gets tracked down. His undefeated season is going to end and Taylor pulls Pulls it out in the MAC championship game and unbelievable upset. And in one of the best games ever featured on this channel, both brothers balled out. Colin averaged 15 yards per carry in a loss, whereas Taylor gutted it out with 450 passing yards and four rushing touchdowns, an insane performance. All right, so it's time to see if Colin will get into the playoff, if he'll win the Heisman Trophy. I have no idea what's gonna happen here. And oh my God, I did not expect this. Taylor finishes second on the Heisman watch. Colin still wins, but both brothers finish in the top two. That's just wild. Northern Illinois is still going to be in the playoffs at number eight. And Kent State actually was not too far off coming in at number 19. I am just still blown away by this top two situation. Taylor wasn't even on the watch before this week. That must have been the most watched MAC championship game of all time. And both brothers finished the regular season with absurd stats. So Colin and the boys are going to be taking on number one Michigan in the playoffs. But to do this in chronological order, we're going to start with Taylor's game against UTSA. Notice here, man, Taylor has done all of this with a 63 overall offense. Imagine what he could do if he transferred. So this is Taylor Fitzpatrick's first ever bowl game. After going three and nine last year, he's led his team to a 10 and three record in a number 19 ranking. I think a big reason he ended up getting so many Heisman votes was because of the hype that built around the second brother versus brother matchup. It became one of college football's top storylines. Nice to see the group of five getting some love because the college football playoff has largely rendered them irrelevant. Taylor and Colin have made Mac football exciting and we'll see if Taylor can cap off his season strong. If he has a big day today, he could potentially get over 5,000 passing yards on the year. He's got to try to punch it in on the goal line here. And he has RB wide open out the gate. Pretty nice tackle by 18, though. Taylor got a whole lot of clutch goal line reps in these last couple of games. I'm hoping he can convert here. And he is going to throw to the corner route, but an absolutely insane pick by the UTSA cornerback. Can't even hate on Taylor for that one. Thankfully, this Kent State team comes up with a turnover of its own. And usually after throwing a pick, Taylor finds a way to redeem himself. Finding Garcia on the wheel here. Gavin Garcia. Garcia has just been so good for Taylor out of the backfield this season. And Taylor throwing off his back foot, able to barely get it to Gardner. Taylor does get some happy feet every once in a while. And he gets 
happy feet here, but it works out as he steps up in the pocket and picks up the first. I'm hoping that pocket presence can develop even further next season, as this time Taylor does have the corner route open and Florier is going to get it down near the one. After having four rushing touchdowns last week, Taylor's going to go over the pile to get another one here at the start of the second quarter. UTSA is 10-2 and two for a reason though. They get a touchdown of their own. I'm expecting a fight in this one. Taylor's going to throw it up deep here and lucky that was not another pick for Cam Alexander. Like I've said though, Taylor's in an offense where he really just has to take those chances. He has to be pushing the ball downfield at all times. Taylor in a Mike Leach air raid offense would have been absolutely diabolical as he just knows how to cut up a defense. McCray's going to fumble it here though and UTSA picks it up. Big blunder by the Kent State receiver who's had an up and down season. Thankfully the Kent State D hasn't been half bad today but Taylor's going to have to lead a touchdown drive here. He gets out of the pocket and who else but McCray is wide open bouncing back across the field. Great job from Taylor to extend the play. That's a play that not a lot of other quarterbacks are making especially not at the G5 level. Garcia getting totally popped there. Despite the pick Taylor's having a solid statistical half but totally misses the throw on third and short. So Kent State's going to run for it on fourth and one. Taylor has a pitch option here but he's not going to take it powering his way forward and barely getting that. Taylor has just shown so much heart down the stretch this season. Despite his lack of extreme arm talent or scrambling talent, you've got to wonder where he'd go in the NFL draft if he went this season as he gets sacked just instantly there. Keep in mind, at five foot nine, Taylor is not necessarily an ideal quarterback prospect, but he's just made the most out of a bad situation with these receivers. That last drop was a pretty big one, and these dudes have really just developed a case of the brick hands. It's been a pretty slow day for a Kent State offense that balled out last week. If there's anyone who could get it going, it's Luke Florier. He's been held to two receptions on the day, which is not super high for him. We'll see if Taylor can get him some more action here in the second half. As he's going to get out of the pocket here, not seeing anything open, he will scramble and get an easy first down down the sideline. This drive has got to end with a touchdown, and Taylor's trying to get Florier involved here, floats it up to him, but Zah Frazier was clearly just baiting him up. That should have been a pick. Definitely not Taylor's cleanest game of the season, and he's going to have to find a way to convert this third and ten. He's going to try the corner route. This has gotten picked off a lot this year, but McCray catches it this time and makes a man miss. Rashawn McCray, after an early drop, is able to get into the end zone. And the Kent State defense actually kind of coming through today as Taylor will get the ball on the read option again, rumbling forward for a big 14-yard game. Pass the ball and run read option. That's all the offense you need sometimes, and I don't know how they left home so open there. Just too easy for a guy like Taylor. It hasn't been our boy's quickest statistical day today. He's done just enough to keep this offense in front. Turns out that after all, Taylor Fitzpatrick might just be a winner, even if he does throw a duck every so often. Hopefully he can keep this drive going on third and inches. And man, that dude played the out route well. Nice catch by Trell Harris. All right, Taylor just got to punch it in here, but bro, I don't even know what happened there. That wasn't the wrong read. Morris just teleported through Taylor's receiver, and that is a big turnover going into the fourth. And of course, UTSA goes down and gets a touchdown. Honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way. Taylor's going to have to lead another game-winning drive. And when in doubt, spread him out. We'll go back to the five wide here. As Taylor has the slant route wide open and misses it. This is a huge third down. Going to have to punt this ball if Taylor can't pick it up, and he tries the out route. That'll get swatted away. This UTSA defense has been tough at times. Thankfully, defense coming down with another huge stop. Now Taylor's just got to get his team into field goal range here. No need to rush it too much here. Absolutely cannot turn the ball over. And Taylor won't have to take too many risks if his receivers are getting open like that. Looks like he is going to go with a four verts here. This is man coverage, so Taylor will get out of the pocket and just throw it away. Just got to will this team to one more score. Taylor finds Gardner over the middle, but it's going to be a third down. And time is taken down in the fourth. Third and three, and thankfully the slant is wide open. I don't know what the heck UTSA is doing. That'll get the boys close to field goal range. As Taylor makes a kind of risky throw to Garcia out of the backfield, but that should definitely put us in field goal range. Kent State kicker does not exactly have a boot though. So ideally we'd pick up a few more here. Taylor trying to get out of the pocket, but takes a terrible sack. I did not think we were getting caught there. All right, big time third and eight. One first down is all we need here. And Taylor will have Holmes out of the backfield. A huge completion should hopefully wrap this one up. Just gotta not do anything stupid here. Holmes is open on the flat. We'll take that and dude will get out of bounds. So with eight seconds left, Taylor is just gonna keep it on the read option to center this ball and slide down. Ken will take a timeout. Just got to see the kicker drill this. And Taylor Fitzpatrick has led his team on yet another game-winning drive, barring this uh, last kickoff here. And that'll do it. An 11-win season for Taylor and the Golden Flashes. Not Taylor's cleanest game, but like I said, dude is just a winner. Did it through the air and on the ground once again. Taylor finishes the season as the NCAA's leading passer with almost 5,000 yards. The touchdown-interception ratio could have been a little bit better. But with what he was working with, I am very proud of the boy. Also added a surprising 500 rushing yards as well as a whole lot of rushing touchdowns so here we go 
y'all. First round of the playoffs, Colin is taking on Michigan. And this will be the hardest defense he's ever played against in his career. But he starts it out picking up 13. All eyes are going to be on Colin in this one. See if the Heisman winner can pull off a gigantic playoff upset. But I believe the Huskies are going to have to pass the ball in this game. And they've got a D lineman up against Colin. Dude has got to throw us the ball there. It'll be third and seven early. Not an ideal situation. But Colin is wide open out of the backfield. Not a great ball from the quarterback, but he will still turn that into a first down easily. Colin has shown that he can play against the big boys here. We already saw that earlier in the season against Florida State. The question is, can his team step up with him? And after coming out for a couple of plays, his boys are able to pick up a first down. So that's encouraging to see, and he'll pick up a first down of his own there. This Michigan D is maybe not all that. I was expecting Colin to struggle more early on in this game, but his offensive line has done an excellent job. Unfortunately, he's coming out of the game again here. And Hampton fighting forward on the speed option. It'll be third down. I don't know why Colin is on the sidelines for and this. His backup's going to get the handoff, bouncing it out, and getting nothing. All right, so the Huskies settle for a field goal on the first drive. But this defense, who has been really good all season, comes up with an interception to start the game, and the Huskies might have something cooking against Michigan. Colin is going to get to the outside. These Big Ten dudes still aren't fast enough, and he'll get into the end zone. NIU takes a 10-point lead on the Wolverines. A lot of people were questioning Northern Illinois even getting into the playoffs after a conference championship loss. But they are proving that they deserve to be here right now, and Colin might be off to the races. I was not expecting to do this to the Michigan defenders, but he is going to take this to the bank. 140 yards for Colin in the first quarter of the Rose Bowl. And Michigan's offense has been shockingly inept. Huskies have got to keep the foot on the gas pedal here as Colin powers forward, almost picks up the first down, but can't. But the Northern Illinois defense continuing to hold strong. And Michigan's defensive game plan has just not been it. The Wolverines seem to think that they can shut down Colin without stacking the box like crazy. Colin's just got to pick up a third in inches here. And he will do that easily. Michigan not doing a good job of containing the outside either. It'd be beautiful if NIU could get another touchdown on this drive. As Collins getting to the edge again here. And once again, showing a little bit of power in his 5'7 frame. Stiff arming for the first. I think we'd run away with this one for sure if Collins could be in on every play. But the problem is he's getting a little bit tired. It doesn't always matter though. Even tired, Collins is faster than anybody else in college football. And he will stumble into the end zone for yet another touchdown. This is looking like a blowout. So in an unbelievable first half. Colin has had his way and the Michigan offense has been almost completely shut out. We'll see if the Wolverines make an adjustment out of halftime. But from what I have seen, they are not as athletic as I thought they'd be. Colin is just so clearly the best player on the field. And the defensive game plan for the Wolverines continues to be trash. Like, why are you not putting guys on the outside on that counter? Colin might have another house call here. He is eventually going to get tracked down by number two. Still a 37 yard rush. And even when he's not on the field, Hampton picks up a touchdown pass. The Husky have proved without a shadow of a doubt that they belong in this game. And now they really just have to run clock. Collins averaging an absurd 15 yards per carry against one of the best defenses in the country. He has basically made them look like a Mac team. There's not really any reason for the Huskies to do anything except to run the ball here. No need to risk turning it over. And man, the blocking is just so beautiful. Collins will get 17 out of that. Now the Huskies are really in Mo clock mode. Might as well just continue to feed Colin the rock and he is off to the races again. Terrible angles across the board for this Wolverines defense, and that should put this one to a close. Allen utterly dominates in the first round of the college football playoffs, one of the most unexpected results in college football history, and NIU might just be a title contender after all. So after a surprising first round of the playoffs, in the second round, Colin and the boys are taking on Clemson, and he's starting this one out with a nice run. I'm definitely expecting more of a challenge against the Tigers today, and Colin gets stuffed near the backfield there. We'll see if this is the game where Northern Illinois is forced to air it out a little bit, and it looks like they'll have have to on third and five. Clemson covers up Colin pretty well. And quarterback's just going to take a dump off. That'll be short. But after defense's excellent performance in the first round, they come through again. And we might just have the firepower to compete with this Clemson team. For a win to be possible, Colin's going to need to continue to break off big plays. And Clemson played the counter pretty well there, not over committing to anything. We'll see though. Plenty of defenses have started off well against Colin, only to be demolished by him in the second half. He's tired though. This will probably have to be his last play before he comes off the field. And he is able to pick up the first down and more. A great push from the offensive line, and Clemson just not putting anyone over the middle. Thankfully, this offense able to move the ball a little bit, even with Colin off the field. And with time running down in the first, they got it down near the goal line. Big time third and two here. Huskies are going to stick with the run, and good blocking, but god damn, Colin gets sat down. With the best running game in the country, there is no way you don't go for this. And a great lead block by the fullback. Colin will pick it up. Just got to punch it in here. The goal line play sets up beautifully. Look at that blocking on the outside, and the Huskies are going to start this one out on top. I have been
been surprised at the ease in which defense has been able to get stops against these tough teams. We'll see if that continues throughout this game. Allen hasn't even really had to do anything crazy in this one. He's just been following his blockers and getting sat down every so often. All right, this is a big time third down. Allen is going to get it out of the backfield and pick it up. Finally able to shrug off a tackle and that'll at least keep the clock moving. I'll feel great if we can go into halftime with any kind of lead, but man, I was not expecting Colin to get thrashed like this. It legitimately seems like Clemson is trying to knock him out of the game. He has a nice hole here, but it'll get shut down quick. This is the defense I was expecting Michigan to play in the first round, but right when I say that, we get a great block and Colin is gone. Do not give him that kind of room. Even when he's getting held down, he still has 100 yards in the first half. So Clemson's able to get three, but at this point, Colin can smell a national championship bird. Just one more big play might send him there. He's been nice and patient in this game. The run up the middle has just been there. He hasn't been trying too hard to bounce it outside. Just waiting for an opportunity to present itself. But Clemson's defenders are relentless. Huskies have to punt on that drive, but once again, Clemson goes down and gets nothing. Another head scratcher of a performance from a power five offense. And IU can think about crushing the clock at this point. But Colin actually has space here. If his receiver held that block, he probably would have been gone. Open for another third down pickup here through the air. As Colin is running this angle route and gets open, gets sat down again, but it does not matter. The clock is going to keep on rolling. We'll see if Clemson can make this interesting in the fourth. I don't know why their fans are so hyped up. And this is another big third and three. Clemson looks like they know what's coming. And yeah, they do. Our blocking wasn't so hot on that one either. All right, well, the Tigers do go down and get a touchdown. This one is not quite over yet. And the run game continues to get shut down. We'll see if the Huskies stick with it. They're going to try to run it outside here on second down, but Colin will get nothing. Clemson takes a timeout with two minutes left. And here we go. Big time third and 12. Can Colin Cook out of the backfield? He's open on the corner route and just barely gets over that dude and he will get way more jetting down the sideline for 50 yards and getting his boys into field goal range even a field goal would keep this as a pretty comfortable lead the way defense is playing just gotta hold on to the ball here coach gonna sneak in a little halfback screen here and this is setting up pretty well just gotta get away from one guy and colin will take this to the bank to hopefully close this thing out and clemson didn't have quite enough offense to hang colin and northern illinois are headed to the national championship game and honestly this was one of colin's weakest performances on the season. Far below his season average, but he still gets the job done. And had 90 yards and a tutty receiving. And it's funny, man. Colin's kind of going on a revenge tour for all the teams that beat Taylor. The Huskies will be taking on LSU in the national title game. Here is the big one. I did not think NIU would be getting here this season. And we'll see if they can take it all the way. It is time for the national championship game. And we'll see if Colin Fitzpatrick can cap off this Cinderella run. The first two rounds of the playoffs have been easier than expected. But I have a feeling LSU is going to have something for Colin today. Day. He's able to pick up a first down early on. But today is all about big plays for Colin. This team basically needs him to break off long rushing touchdowns. Although his offensive supporting members have been stepping up lately. He's already getting a little bit tired here. His coach is going with a power run approach, but he's bouncing this one outside. Might have a shot, but gets absolutely creamed. We've seen a lot of this in the last couple of weeks, actually. But with Colin off the field, his quarterback actually comes up with a big game. And hopefully that'll open things up for the run game. Colin gonna juke out a couple of guys here. Almost sprung that for the touchdown. And he'll be faced with a big third and two near the goal line. The blocking was kind of funky on the outside. Colin runs into a guy and it'll be fourth and one. Colin's gonna have to watch this play from the sideline. I am nervous. There's no surprises. NIU's gonna run it, but the quarterback keeps it and no one sees him. He will take it in for the touchdown. How about Ethan Hampton? After a lot of underwhelming games, the Huskies quarterback has stepped up a little bit in the playoffs. And Colin looking for a big play here. Can't quite get around the outside. Just need Hampton to be able to make a couple of throws in this game. And Colin is just wide open. And this should be a house call if he can make a couple of guys miss. Hits the back juke. But a nice tackle. I thought we were out of there for sure. And just to note, defense did once again come up with a stop against one of the best offenses in the country. But Colin just getting leveled by these dudes. He'll be on the sidelines again for this third down. And NIU's going to run the option again. This time it will not work. Notably, the NIU kicker missed the extra point on the first drive. And I thought Colin was going to bounce it out there. Receiver just needed to hold that block for another second. Just got to keep looking for those big play opportunities. And L LSU going with a blitz here. It'll be third and very short. And this is goal line time. We'll just try to power for it, but Colin gets stopped short. This is decision time for the NIU coaches. When someone's averaging 13 yards a carry, you give them two plays to get a half inch, and he will do it here on the halfback dive. 
taking another big hit though. Holland keeps bouncing back up, but you gotta wonder if that's shaking him up. Five foot seven frame has taken quite a lot of abuse lately. Holland's gonna try his little one man reverse here, and it actually works out pretty well. Almost got a block to get to the outside, but I think he's gonna have to come off the field again after this play. And on third and inches, Hampton gets sacked. Come on, man. Okay, thankfully defense gets a turnover. That's exactly what we needed. Holland has 30 seconds to find the end zone here. Might have to do it with the pass game a little bit though. LSU's defense has done a pretty good job of keeping Colin bottled up. He's still getting yards, but he has had to work a lot harder for them. Gotta score quick here. We'll see what the boy Hampton can do. As Colin finds a seam over the middle and is able to hold on. Nice catch after the improvisation. All right, gotta punch it in on first and goal here. Plenty of time to do it and Colin will do it right out the gates. Big time score for the Huskies. We'll break the career rushing record for NIU. And it looks like the Huskies are gonna go with the same play on the PAT. Colin is able to make up for the missed extra point. That is big. All right, Huskies have a meager lead at halftime. We'll see if they can hang on to it. And this is a great block. Colin might finally have the play he's been looking for. Beats number eight, just got to beat number 10. And he does it. Let's go, man. I knew it was just a matter of time. Didn't get one of these last game, but it is 86 yards to the bank. Just a beautiful block from the fullback number 49. Tigers answer back with a touchdown. Got to keep the foot on the gas here. This diamond formation is great. Allows so many opportunities for Colin to cut. And he continues to get whacked by these DBs. Gonna stick with the diamond look here on second and inches and it works out very well again this time Colin tries to get it to the outside but can't quite do it he is a little bit tired right now I'm hunting for the big play because one more could be all Colin and his team need but number four just bullies the lineman there and the Huskies are gonna have to put it in the air again so you know Colin's gonna be the main option out of the backfield here Hampton finds the out route and that'll get nine yards at least we'll go with the run on third and four I feel better about this than the pass and that is well blocked thankfully Colin is able to pick it up and we're getting close to field goal range here after sitting out for a couple of plays Colin is back on the field on third and three running a little trap concept and he will pick it up swerving around for more and thankfully holding on to the ball despite getting hit hard again no shame in chewing some clock here but I'm gonna try to fit in another pass and Colin is able to beat his guy to the outside but a nice tackle from number seven okay so our boys coming off the field again here at the end of the third Hampton's gonna put the ball in the air do not turn it over Hampton he's gonna throw to the corner of the end zone and was that a pick I thought he got a foot in for sure really that is ruled an incompletion super dangerous pass from Hampton I'm fine with just taking our three here, but Hampton is going to take a sack. Okay, we're still in field goal range, right? Okay, well, for some reason, the Huskies have decided to go for it, and Hampton is just going to throw that into nowhere. Come on, bro. And LSU, of course, goes down to get the touchdown. Huge blunder in game management from the NIU coach. And now Colin needs to clutch up. LSU knows exactly what's coming. They've got everybody in the box, but Colin still might have a hole here. Gets to the outside, one tackle to break, and cannot quite do it. Still a big time play though. All right, just got to keep doing the thing. This fullback number 49 has just been a menace on the blocking and we need one of these counter plays to hit. But LSU totally knows it's coming since everybody and Colin gets sat down. This third and eight could decide the season, which is actually going to split Colin wide on third and eight. A little bit of a different look, but Colin finds the seam and a dot from Hampton delivered that ball right on time and Colin is amped up. All the Huskies have to do is kill a little bit of clock and kick the field goal. This third and three is it. Just got to pick this up, Colin, and we're chilling. And great blocking. He will be able to do it. Let's go. And we still got three timeouts to use. I don't want to leave this up to the kicker, which already decided not to kick last time at a stupid moment. We'll run the one man reverse. Doesn't work out at all there. And we'll call another timeout. Okay, this is probably going to be the last play of the season for Colin. Second and seven. It's going to be a counter. A great block from 11. Can he get around this one guy? He can. Colin Fitzpatrick with what should be the game winning touchdown. To close out a miracle championship run for the Huskies. But it's not quite over yet 12 seconds left on the clock you never know what could happen and lsu is going to take it out of the end zone here dude kind of has a lane and is going to get out near the 40 all right i would assume lsu is just going hail mary here and we're swarming dude in the backfield looks like he's going to take a sack no he shakes out of it he will throw down field and it will be swatted away let's go colin fitzpatrick is a national champion in his junior season carried his team every step of the way 250 yards and three touchdowns as well as being the leading receiver as always. Gotta check out the season stats here because this was just ridiculous. 4,500 yards rushing, 11 yards per carry, 55 rushing touchdowns. Colin had the greatest season anybody's ever seen. As well as adding 700 yards through the air, 9 receiving touchdowns. He has all the athleticism his dad had and more. And let me know in the comments what the hell you think Colin and Taylor should do next season. Should I put them on the same team? Should they go somewhere in the Power 5? Should Colin come and save Taylor at Kent State? Let me know. I will see y'all then. Peace.